One day I'll be the Wizard King. I will become the Wizard King. I will become the Wizard I... King. I'm gonna you be, gonna be, gonna be the, the Wizard King, King right? I'm, I'm going, going to become the Wizard King. King. I'm gonna be the Wizard King. I'm gonna be the Wizard King. Call me the Wizard King. I will be the Wizard King. Shut the reception for Black Clover has been divisive, rightly so I guess. Anime only viewers were largely satisfied while the show left a lot to be desired amongst manga readers. The Black Clover movie Sword of the Wizard King was released in June and I waited a while to watch it for myself for no apparent reason. Just by looking at the trailers before the release date I knew it looked good. I even saw the mostly positive reviews and ratings but I finally decided enough is enough it's time to see the action through and watch it. I needed a push to catch up on the manga again since initially doing so a couple months ago only to then leave the chapters build up for another binge read. This definitely did it for me. Here are my main takeaways of the movie. This is a great example of what a non-canon movie should be. Solid animation, better than the main series. Then some in-universe fan service if it can help itself. The Sword of the Wizard King's animation? Considering that the movie is 80% vibrant action scenes, I have to give it my fan stamp of approval. I'm not mad if people want to give it marks down for the action heavy content, but when the quality is that good, it really doesn't bother me. As for the music, it did do its job in adding suspense and emotion in appropriate scenes, even if I bothered to remember only one track. That being the one in the climactic action sequence of the final battle, Haruka Miwai, which most of you well know is the show's first opening song. Moving on to the villains, since they are the only new characters. In the main series, the villains are kind of forgettable, to me at least. This isn't the case for Conrad Letter. The whole, the world did me wrong, so I'll change it starting with complete annihilation motive is not a new concept. But as far as movie villains go, he's one of the better examples out there. The standout features are the similarities and differences he has with Aster on their experiences with societal injustice and skill set respectively. As for the other three Wizard Kings, I like two of them. Jester is a joy to watch with his moveset and playful dialogue. Prince here is fine I guess, but not because of her presence but the fact that she sets the stage for Mary Oleona's performance. Edward, he's just there. Again, that's just me. And that's fine. Enjoying the main villain and one and a half of the henchmen is more than enough not to ruin the first time viewing experience. When the anime returns, it would be such a shame if the animation quality holds up closer to the series more so than the movie. With the show rumoured to potentially return as early as summer 2024 and the manga officially wrapped up less than a few weeks ago, they should have more than enough preparation to make sure it's up to standard with its shonen siblings. Overall, Studio Piero done a great job on the movie. Even if you're not a diehard fan, you should give this one a watch. If you're looking for a reason to get back into the series, then this is the one for you. That's it. That's the end of the video. Since I've only gone through the things in the movie that stuck with me, I'm interested in your thoughts. Let me know in the comments what you think of the movie or the main series. Roll save.